live look at the Gang Fly Parade. Thousands of people queued up. If you want to get a sense of where we're located, think of California, assuming maybe you don't live here. Los Angeles, which is down near the bottom. West Hollywood is more or less the belly button of Los Angeles. From here, it's generally equidistant all the way to downtown, heading east, and then west toward the Pacific Ocean. That's Santa Monica, that's the Pacific Ocean, of course. Great place to surf, Malibu, famous place, and this beach, all of that. So West Hollywood is in the middle. It's near the freeways. It's close enough to the studios, and then you can jump over the hill to the valley, famous from Valley Girls. So you're staring literally at ground zero of Gate Pride. Live pictures here. This is the stuff you generally never see. What you see are the marches, the revelers, in a brilliant, well, I, I would love to say highly organ, organized, but we all know the deal. But the generally marching in a row. What happens before is called staging. And what you're seeing is behind the scenes, behind the scenes aerial view of what staging looks like. But this is not something that uh, normally we ever get from book out. So they wait and wait until the number is called. And they move forward in possession, much as if uh, you were buying groceries in the grocery store. And had to wait in line until it was your turn. Let's see if we can just take a listen. Sometimes the music is on or not. You missed the lesbian bagpipers. They may come back. They practice. It was uh, spectacular, to say the least. So you're taking a look again at the uh, live shot of the staging. I'm just multitasking. That's why I pause there. Checking the audio levels. They look good. Ah, that's what I was looking for. Okay. So we are uh, we're lucky to get any kind of internet out here, it must be. Live streaming does not happen magically. It happens because you're able to get some kind of internet signal. So I have set up a couple of repeaters here and they seem to be working great. So I'm super happy about that. You can see the floats are now moving, which means the next set of people have been given permission to get in line. I don't have the setup of who's who and what's what, so I can't tell you. I'm just going to say hi here quickly. I can't tell you who's in line and what it means, because I don't have that rundown. But it is also the first year that our ABC station, Channel 7, is broadcasting this thing. Before it was always undercover. We would raised the money through the nonprofit Christopher Street West. We certainly had plenty of its own controversies. Oh, look, hundreds of thousands of dollars disappeared. Well, it is America. I guess that is the way. Another conversation for another time, right? Anyway, uh, it was done by the local cable company, Time Warner, known as Spectrum. It was Comcast. There was no interconnect between the cable system. It was the local cable system. And it was, so it was an L.O., Local Origination Project, for years and years and years. Then one year they streamed it. And then, you know, there's just vast amounts of money to be made doing pride. Therefore, ABC, like imagine the value of a car commercial during the Pride Parade. It's like a mini Super Bowl once a year. 300,000 people could leave the public show for the parade. They're on the sidelines. You can't see it because we're in the staging area right now. But then there's millions of people, potentially. And then there's the online streaming. And we'll be watching the commercials. The commercials are high value, especially on a Saturday for a TV station where their revenue pretty much sucks, given the general kind of program, unless it's 
football or something of that nature for its high value. So a pride parade is going to definitely garner a lot of eyeballs. These would be people in Long Beach, Orange County, uh, way out in the mountains. There's a lot of rural areas around LA who would not have the opportunity to come to or the damn nerve to attempt to park, to attempt to park a mile from here because there isn't any whatsoever. So I'll be watching it on TV the first time it's available. It's the value of that advertising is pretty accurate. I was pitching this thing years ago. You know, why do you take advantage of this? And then some of the money that's raised from that will go to see LGBT cause as well. I'm not convinced that a penny of that would, but at least when it's televised, it normalizes what this is. And I will say, and this is just my eyes in on this. Many years ago, when we would watch a game play, I say many, I mean five or six years ago, it was just a fetish group after a fetish group. It was the sling people and the leather people and the nipple ring people and the water sport people. As if that was the gay community. Well, there's the gay community. It's a big sort of public porn fetish group. This is not a commentary on fetishes, by the way. It's just the only ones, I guess in a way, brave enough, given that the circumstances were not favorable. Gay marriage is still only a handful of years old. The ones that were willing to step out were the ones that, I think, had a most structured self-identification. So it looked like that's what gay was. And it's gained great ammo for the last 200 years. Four groups to point out, that's all we are, is a group of wannabe orgasmists. And now that it's become normalized, and again, this harkens back to why televising it on a commercial station in every living room, potentially across the country, because on ABC 7 out of LA, LA is market number two. That means it is the second largest broadcast market in the United States. To televise that, that stream is available all over the world as a normal thing with car commercials, with airline commercials, with mattress sale commercials, baby carriage, gold bond for the rash in your rear end, whatever. Mildred, sensible shoes, all the kind of stuff. And that normalizes this. So each time these big steps happen, and I speak only through the prism of media, you end up with a different look of a crime. You'll note, just by looking down, maybe in the lower right hand corner, it's uh, Speedos, because it's a Speedo, the original Speedo band is down there. It's just a bunch of guys in Speedos. Delicious. No question, you know, not going to wrestle you with that on that. I think we all know, yes. But that is no longer the point. If you look around at the general spectrum, it's people in t-shirts and shorts. And the floats are people in t-shirts and shorts. And the floats are on a whole spectrum of commerce to people supporting and involved in the gay community. This is a radical shift from just five years ago. It's profound. I've been to three gay prides in uh, Sydney, Australia. I lead a group there every year. You can check it out. Go to mysterytours.org. Mysterytours.org. I work with Who Travel, agenttravel.com. We're a gay tour company. And we do the Great Barrier Reef, we do the Outback. And then we do Sydney Gay Mardi Gras every single year. It happens in February. Join me. Let me take you on the trip of your lifetime. And they've been televising this on their network TV for 10 years. No controversy. And it has normalized this thing. They just recently got gay marriage for a very open, egalitarian society, universal health care, all that stuff that we're in many ways jealous of. They just recently got gay marriage. That's because the way it was put up for a vote was the way... Brexit happened in London by a handful of extreme right-wingers posing a question that doesn't make sense. 
just like the version of the Tea Party, has all the people in it, or many of the people in it, who are voting against their own, their own best interests. Like, let's get rid of medicine. Yes, good idea. Crazy stuff like that. But it's not laid out, it's not explained, and it's certainly not in the nightly news in any way that's meaningful or effective. That said, the Australians be broadcasting their gay prides for so long that all the hotels, everything is gay friendly in the whole continent. Because remember, Australia is a continent. It's a whole continent. It's an island. A massive island. Uh, so, that was the way it was normal. So it wasn't a, a political move. It just made sense. And here, I think because of the, the optics, maybe the way it was done, it only West Hollywood. And if you want to do a fly, do it in Beverly Hills. That'll stick out. But we were sort of self-selecting our own floats. And we would self-select ourselves in jock straps and all the rest of it which is fine, but unlike the Australians, we do have an FCC, we do have very freaked out broadcasters, even though they say fucking shit on TV. You heard it. I'm not shocking anyone here. This is not a world watch. Something like a jock strap. Oh my God! So yeah, the rules are always different depending on to whom they apply. That said, it wasn't sort of suitable for TV. I have to credit the a couple of years ago, we had our resistance. That took this whole orgy of colors here and turned it literally into a political resist march, which was delicious. It harkened back to the earliest days. And it was up on Hollywood Boulevard in Main Street, Los Angeles. 700,000 people showed up and were in that as marches. It was powerful stuff. And it was the many months, or the first set of months after the Trump administration stepped in and immediately started blasting civil rights left, right, and down. So the timing was impeccable. It still is, but we can get comfortable. Netflix has a new release every other day, and it's going to be okay. Yawn, gulp, gulp. So, this is sort of where it's come out to, but because of that, is this part, the parade following it still had a patina of the resist to it, meaning the kind of sexual, psychosexual fantasy fetish version was minimized to next to nothing. And then you look at it now, two years later, and it just looks like a bunch of the same Americans. And listen, I know. Some of you are pissed. Like, look, don't hammer the... I'm not hammering the finish. I'm not. It's just if you only represent one version of an entire group, and that is the public face, that's what people assume. And I would like to think that we have a pretty good range of motion. My twin sister, Floyd Twister, is a lesbian. Not a lipstick lesbian, more of a chapstick lesbian. And... She's a psychologist, and, you know, just like a sort of a 